Yes. Hi, good morning. We'd like to thank Hanan and Ilya for this uh, excellent uh, conference. And for the other speakers, it was a really pleasure yesterday to listen to them. Thank you. Um, probably within this audience, I'm the only one that was able to extend lifespan by 30%. I did it to mice. So I will show you how we did it in mice. But I will show you later, hopefully, how we're planning to do it in human and take whatever we found in mice into human therapy. So I'm going to talk about 36. 36 is an enzyme. And for the scientific audience here, it has two enzymatic activity. It's an NAD dependent enzyme, meaning that it's using NAD, which is, has an important role in regulating our lifespan. And it, as it affects the NAD, it can either do deacetylation or deacylation of other protein, meaning that it's removed the acetyl group from other protein, or another activity, it can act as mono ADP ribosyl transferase. So it's take the ADP ribose and connect it to another protein and regular the activity. Cell 6 is involved in many activities within the cells. Many of this uh, that I'm going to show you, we were involved in, in finding them. For example, it's involved in DNA repair, in glucose metabolism, and by regulating glucose metabolism, it's prevent or block cancer, act as tumor suppressor because it's a blocks the, the, the Warburg effect. It's uh, involved in dietary restriction. We showed that under dietary restriction or color restrictions that extend lifespan, the level, the level of 36 increase. It's involved in maintaining, maintaining your telomere length, prevent inflammation, also in embryonic development. If you have a uh, homozygous mutation for 36, it's embryonic lethal in human. In monkeys, you die two hours after birth. In mice, when you don't have 36, you develop premature aging phenotype. You die very early after four, four weeks. Today, I'm going to show you evidence or results that we have about the roles of cert 6 in aging. Within all of the cert 6 activity that I just described you, most of them, cert 6 act as a deacetylase, meaning that it's removed the acetyl group, in most of the case, from the histone and regulate transcription. So as I just told you a few years ago, we showed that under the dietary restriction or color restriction, or even under short fasting, intermediate fasting, the levels of cell 6 increase. And this suggests to us that if you can increase the level of 36, and maybe cell 6 is involved in aging, maybe you can get the same effect just by creating mice that will overexpress 36 in each tissue of the body and mimicking the effect of color restriction and decide to follow what's happened if you overexpress 36 in mice to metabolism and to aging. And the way that we did it, we generated the mice that call Moses. Moses for mice overexpress an exogenous 36. It's a transgenic mice that have higher level of 36 exactly like in color restriction. And we started to investigate what's happened with these mice. We published in a set of papers that once you overexpress 36, this is one of the papers that we published recently, if you are a male mice, you live 30% longer in average. This means that some of the mice live in even 50% longer. In human terms, it means that instead of, a, instead of a live up to eight, nine, age 90, now you live up to age 120. In female, we extend the lifespan of these mice by 15%. And now we're trying to understand what was the difference. I know it sounds like a much bigger question. What is the difference between female and male, at least in regarding to regulating of lifespan? It's not only that, uh, that we're able to extend lifespan, we've also been able to extend healthy lifespan. The one of, this means that when we follow the biochemistry of the blood, the maintain biochemistry of the blood exactly like young mice. We follow tumors. There was delay in the appearance of tumor. Some of the tumors, tumor types did not appear at all. If we follow inflammation, it's block age-dependent inflammation. So plenty of phenotype that because of cell 6 overexpression, we were able to delay or actually block once you overexpress 36. And one of the phenotype was when you took the mice and fed them high fed diet, even for half of, even for half a of year, they didn't develop obesity related phenotype. One of the main phenotype, I will uh, try to speak faster because now I realize it's, uh, I still have only five minutes. One of, one of the main phenotype of aging 
It's called frailty or the frailty syndrome. I think all of us know what is the frailty syndrome. If we think about all the individual, that's, I, I will repeat it. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> frailty is a syndrome that characterizes in uh, all the, almost 30% of individuals above age 80, five to 10 percent of individuals above age 65. And you can see the main characterization of frailty, it's weakness, slow walking. There's a, the reports that have low level of physical activities are exhausted and they lose weight even without any diet. If you think about all the individuals, you imagine immediately you will figure out what is frailty about. So what we found the third six blocks frailty syndrome, I will give you some example. This is a movie in which we compare between 36 transgenic mice and wild type litter mates. The age of these mice, is, the minimum I think is 24 months. Some of them are even older. In human terms, it's meaning that the age was 80 years old. And we just followed the running of these mice. Remember, remember again, at age 80. You can see here that the transgenic mice keep running, whereas the normal or wild type animal don't move. In other words, what we showed, the third six block, the frailty syndrome, I think in a practical term, this is very important because frailty, this is one of the challenges that the NA decided to address in the next decade. So we have several questions. How third sex maintain higher activity at old age? And I will make a very long story short. We did all the metabolomics of uh, old mice. This is the liver, for example. We also characterize the blood. We characterize what's happening in, in the adipose tissue and so on. And to sum it, if you can see, arrow show what is going up or going down with aging. Dot show what's happened in third six overexpression. You can see that basically it's reverse it to young like metabolism in the liver. But it's not, it's not enough. But once you reverse it to young like metabolism, now you can produce energy either by this cycle or by other cycles that cell six activate. And now you can get enough energy to be active even at old age. But it's not enough to have a better metabolism. You also need to, to see what's happening in the muscle. And we followed this I saw on the street when I, one of my morning running. And and we asked, okay, what's happened to the muscle when you overexpress 36? Let me show you a few results because it's unpublished. For example, the level of 36 increase once you perform physical activity. Also, if you ask what is the outcome of this, it's active at AMPK. AMPK is one of the targets of metformin. So basically by this, it's mimic the effect of metformin under uh, physical activity. So we know that 36 for it blocks the frailty just by changing the metabolism and change muscle activity. But how does third six control longevity? To, to answer it, we did a lot of experiment. Some of them I summary here because it's act as tumor suppressor, it's repressor of mTOR like carpomycin, activate uh, repressor IGF-1, activate MPK, but is this enough? But the, the big question I think that all of us ask here, okay, so we spoke about mice, can we translate it into human, right? That's probably what I believe uh, most of the audience here ask themselves. So we established a few years ago, a company called Cert, Cert Lab. It's now, it came out of my lab. It's now in Nest Siona. I'm going to show you one of the results or two results in which we ask what will happen if we activate 36 not from birth, but we'll activate it later in life and even un under condition of NASH and under conditions of a uh, high fat diet and diabetic mice. I'm going to show you two results. This is one of the results. For example, here we did, we did several models. This is the model of high fat diet that the mice develop, they become diabetic and they develop fatty liver and so on. And we use our drug, for example, you can see the, the orange, line is 36 or mice that were treated with a drug. The blue line are mice that were not treated by, by a drug. If you don't get 36 as a drug, you die. If you, over, if you activate 36, you survive. This is the simple lessons that come out of it. 
if you ask what's happened to the liver, how the livers look, if you are a fan of uh, liver pictures, this is what, how it looks. This is how it looks, a fatty liver after the treatment. You see it's, it's it has this uh, fat on it, it has the beginning of tumor, so on. This is how the liver, even after a short uh, treatment of 36, just remember we started not from the beginning. We gave the mice time to develop fatty liver. We gave the mice time to develop diabetic mice, and then we treated them with our drug, and it's a restore normal liver. So we can save their life and we can restore the normal liver by using a drug that activate 36. And this is very important because we believe now that we will, what we check now is the effect on longevity in mice and the effect on um, frailty in mice by using a drug. We finish here, we like to thank, sorry, my groups, my, group, my, my students here are my group and all the collaborators. And for all of you, thank you very much. Okay, it was a negative effect by increasing 36. In the mice that were over 36, we didn't find yet any negative effect. There are some evidence that 36 under some condition might uh, repress some, uh, I would say, let's say this way. W one way that maybe that we'll find some negative condition for 36, maybe under extreme inflammation, if it's block inflammation, you might want to have some level of inflammation, but yet when we did it, you can see that third six, the third six able to maintain the equilibrium of inflammation. From one hand, it's regulate the secretion of a inflammatory signal, and the other hand, it's repress the downstream signal on the DNA. So we didn't see it, but maybe in natural condition, you need to repress the anti-inflammation activity of 36. I don't think so. I think that this is a very important activity of 36. We see in the brain, for example, when you overexpress 36, actually it's block brain inflammation, chronic inflammation that you got in the brain. And it's important for all of us because once you block chronic inflammation in the hypothalamus, you extend the lifespan of mice by 10%.